He's here. Amen. We had a wonderful time this morning. We usually listen to Brother Tony in Gainesville after waking up. That's after we come to prayer at five. We go to breakfast and then we come and sleep for a little bit. Then we turn on Gainesville. And we had a wonderful surprise tonight. Today it was Brother Jeff Arnold. I've been listening to Brother Jeff Arnold since I was very young, probably 25 years old. I went to Brother Arnold still had black hair. And he came to our church in Marion, Indiana. And he was just a, a magician, a gospel magician. And the pastor there asked him, Brother Schmidt asked him, he said, have you ever thought about preaching? He said, well, no, but if you want me to, I can try. He's turned out to be one of the greatest preachers our time and a man of God that loves the word my dad's Bible that he left me is, is he's got the oils of his hands and the time that he spent in the word but compared to Jeff Arnold's Bible I mean it's just it used to be like that now it's uh, got notes and writings and God is always talking to him and he's always talking to the Lord and not that Jeff Arnold is our savior or that he's perfect he's the first one to admit I've got a long way to go but praise the Lord for the word of God that comes through that man, the Petrus. And I, I am no Jeff Arnold by no means, but I love listening to God's word. I love listening to man of God preach. I love to preach. I love preaching. I just, I can't believe that I'm almost 70 years old. And I'm like, Lord, I won't get to preach very much longer. So whatever chances you give me here to preach the word of God, I want to preach. Title of the message tonight, Thou Art Christ. Thou Art the Christ. And we're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And I'm going to read while you stand. 17 and 19. Matthew 16, 17 and 19. And Jesus answered and said unto him, the libro de Mateo 16, versículo 17 y 19, hasta 19. Mateo 16, versículo 17 hasta 19. Matthew 19, chapter 19, verses 17 through 19. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Now he just called him Simon or Jonah. That's his name. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Heavenly Father, bless the word today. Give us wisdom. Give us words to, to feed the flock today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. And I hope you preach with me tonight. I remember a few years ago, there was a new organization that was being built. And it was mostly being built by disgruntled preachers that were upset at the United Pentecostal Church for whatever reason. It had something to do with television and different things that are creeping into our organization. I never heard Brother Bernard or the previous administration of the United Pentecostal Church have known a lot of these things. A lot of these things have a way of infiltrating our churches. And, and so that's not God's fault. It's not the administration's fault. It's the individual that allows the voice of the enemy to creep into the church. And, and, and also we know that not everybody that sits in the building is, is part of the church. The Bible says Upon this rock, I will build my church. 
He didn't say that the rock was the church. We have a picture that I took, we took this morning of a tree that is growing out of a rock. And I thought, as Brother Angelo began to read the scripture about what a saint of God will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And I began to think, the church is not the rock. The rock is what the church is built upon. So we got to be careful that, that we don't make the rock the church. The Lord said, if, if these be quiet, the rocks are going to cry out. We don't want the rocks crying out. We don't want religion crying out. We want the church to be crying out. And, and this organization that was being created by this troubled minister, they have uh, approached and sent me a letter said we found out that there's an organization that claims the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church but in reality all they preach is the oneness and I began to think you know isn't that isn't that what Paul said Paul said I I count it all but loss for the excellency of the gospel. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, when I came to you, he said, I, I, I purpose in my heart not to know anything. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with an excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So you're in an apostolic church. Don't be surprised if I'm going to preach about Jesus today. Because that's what we preach here. And it's not all we preach. But praise the Lord. I'm not surprised when God gives us a word concerning the Christ. You know why I'm not alarmed? Because the whole Bible is about the Christ. The whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. The Trinitarian people have a hard time trying to to bring some kind of unity to, to their doctrine of the Trinity. And the reason that it doesn't congeal very well is because it's not a doctrine that is taught in the Word of God. They were thinking of a way that they could have Christianity without the name. It's about 300 years after Christ was dead, resurrected, ascended up there. And the glory about 300 years later that they were getting persecution and they were told, we don't care if you have a church. We don't care if you guys have a religion. Just don't do it in the name. And so they started thinking, how can we have church without the name? And they came up with a Trinitarian doctrine that God is actually three persons. And I don't know where they got the idea that God is just the Father and just the Son and just the Holy Ghost when God is everything. Jesus is everything. He's the Alpha and He's the Omega. He's the beginning, He's the ending, and everything in between. So I don't know why they did all these things. And then they try to put it together. But the Bible teaches us that we cannot love two masters, much less three. Why? Because He began to, to, to say, worship unto God the Father and and then you kind of get lost because, well, what did God the Father ever do except for send his boy over here to die for us? But when you begin to understand that this boy was not a third person in the Godhead, it was the word that had been made flesh and he dwelled among us. It was God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And that is very difficult to understand unless you're born again. So when you take Jesus out of the equation, when you take out the name, you also take out salvation because neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name given among men by the which we must be saved. So you take the name out and you take out salvation. I don't want to take out salvation. I don't want to try to get some concept or some idea and then try to get to God's word somehow to my thoughts 
That's a God that you've created. That's a God that they've created. The God that created me is one. Hero Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. From there, everything else that you read, you got to branch off of that. God is one Lord. And that God was in Christ. Christ said, you see me, you see the Father. For me and the Father, we are one. So either Jesus was a liar or he was one with the Father. And then we got a chance to give Brother Jeff Arnold, like I said this morning. And he said, when God said he went from here to over there, it's not that he had to actually go travel. Because how can God travel? He's everywhere. But his presence is absent sometimes for us to be able to feel. Unless God allows us to feel his presence in our most patient, like we are feeling here tonight, is because God has allowed us. Not because God traveled anywhere, but God has opened up the heavens and allowed us to feel his presence. And I can worship Jesus. Now that one, Brother Freddie, that one, he done a lot for us. Brother Freddie was talking about by his stripes we are healed. By his life hanging on a cross. Like taking that tabernacle that's where he dwells and taking and allowing it. He says, you don't take my life, I lay it down. Why? Because he loved us so much. He died and he rose from the dead and he ascended on high and he dwelleth. He's not dead, he's alive. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness. All. What? Weakness. And in fear. How many of you sometimes watch the, the news and get like, oh my word. This thing is falling apart. But Paul said, I was in fear. And in much trembling. But Paul, you're the man. No, Paul's not the man. Paul's letting you know, I'm not the man. There is a rock. And upon that rock, upon that revelation of who Jesus is, he has built this church. And when you turn the radio off, when you turn the, like Joe Biden said, when you turn the record player off, when you turn the rhetoric of the world, and you focus in on the word of God, God's got the world in the palm of his hand. God is still in control. And if we are built on the rock, if we're in the church, we're on a solid foundation. Church is not the rock, but it's built on the rock. And so Paul has let us know. I tremble sometimes. It's scary. Anybody here likes getting slapped in the face? I slapped my wife in the face a couple of times, but it was in my sleep. And I was so sorry. I, I was. I, I smack it and I, I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. My daddy never never allowed us to get girls. Here I done smacked her and, and, and really sorry, repented in my heart. I'm sorry that happened. But Paul's been slapped and been beaten, he's been imprisoned, and, and he, he was he, he was a man. And he trembled. This is an I beseech, and and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I wasn't the greatest, most eloquent speaker. But I come to you in a demonstration of the spirit and of power. I want the power in the house, thanks to God. We cannot have church without power. We cannot have church without an anointing. We need the anointed one. You know, the title of the message, How Are the Christ Came Out of the Mouth of Peter. Who do men say that I am? And they call him the best of the Savior Elijah, one of the prophets, John the Baptist. These are the whom say he that I am. Out of the mouth of Peter before he even thought, you know, Peter, he was always just like ready to just be at the end, right? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So if you're a Trinitarian, you say, okay, this one here is the son of that one over there. But if you understand what thou art the Christ, the Christ is the anointed one. The anointed one. Christ is from the Greek word Christos. And there is a Messiah and Christ have the same meaning, which means the anointed one. He, the 
must be in us, saints of God. And without him, we cannot have church. We cannot have healings. We cannot have baptisms in Jesus' name. We cannot have infilling of the Holy Ghost. That's why a lot of churches are barren. There is no one getting the Holy Ghost. No one is getting baptized in Jesus' name because they have forgot the anointed one. We've got to have him in the house. I baptize you as a pastor. I baptize you in the water. You know, the mystical. I remember when the Lord told Peter, as he gave him the keys here, I'll give you the keys. And he said, Peter, whatever you find on earth shall be bound in heaven. And Peter took out the keys on the day of Pentecost and he said, repent. Key number one. Some of you know what that means. I was walking this way doing my own thing, but I was so unhappy. I had all these friends and I had all this money, but I was not happy. But I got so sick and tired of that. And I said, God, I'm tired of running my life my way. I want to run my life your way. That was the day that you repented. Not when you said, oh, I'm sorry. That's an apology. We all apologize. But yes, you repent is a different thing. You're walking according to what you think, what you believe. It's time for the world to stop thinking what they believe because if we all run this world the way we believe it turns into chaos what's going on in america saints of god is chaos because everybody's got their opinion everybody's got their own understanding some are for the moms some are for the babies some are for the, the sickness and the doctors and on and on and on how about if we get back to the word of god how about if we get back to the rock of ages and so that's what Surrender, give up. A lot of people don't repent. They still want to be their boss. They want to be baptized in Jesus' name. What a miserable, I was preaching in Spanish, what a miserable, miserable, miserable life. Jesus said, you're not hot and you're not cold. You're making me sick. I'll spew you out of my mouth. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that. I'm not going to mention what that is, but I don't want to be that. So the best thing kind of sounds like to me, the Lord is saying, you'd be better off if you go to the world and, and, and have at it. I think you're sick and tired of it. And then come. I, I don't need to go do that. I've got my father's testimony. i got my mother's testimony. I've got my uncle Gilberto Gonzalez's testimony. My tia Maria. Once God saved Augustine Rios, people started coming from all over. If God can do that for him, I want that God to do that. But this took a total repentance. No more drinking. No more getting a hold of the things of the world. But it's day after day walking with Jesus. Walking with the Lord. You know, when you're on the rock, I want this little tree. This little tree, you can go by Lozano's. Whatever that little road is by Lozano's. And, and over to the right, there's a, a little factory or tanning place or something there, business place, and Lozano's is to the left. And, and that rock is right there beside the road. You can see that rock. And I watched that, that little tree when it first started coming out about three years ago, a little bitty twig, a little bitty plant. And I'm like, well, it's going to die because where is it going to get its nutrients? Where is it going to survive? The Bible says in John 15, chapter 50, verse 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And I began to think about, I, I went and looked up the word vine. Vines are kind of weird. There's bad vines. Poison ivy is a vine. There's all kinds. Of, I began to look on Google and there was a list of all the different kinds of vines. There is something about a vine that if there is an area that is stony, but it's got sunshine, and then there's an area that's got soil, but it doesn't have the sunlight on it. A 
mind is, in the way God created the mind, it will root itself in the soil that is good. And then it will start branching off to get over to the sun. How many of you remember the message that we heard that we are not anchored to the earth? We are anchored to Jesus, the first Jesus in the heavens. That's why they, they cause all this stirring. They're going to kill Christians and they're going to they're going to indoctrinate our children and they're going to do this and they're going to get worse and They're stirring everything down the wall. But they don't, they don't realize we're not anchored to this earth. We're anchored to Jesus. He's in heaven. My hope is in Jesus. And I've learned how to get to the sunlight. Give us the wisdom, Lord, to abide in the... Don't, don't leave the mind. Don't leave the nutrients that you're getting from above. Those say, well, I'm going to go over here and start my own religion. I, I'm going to just serve the Lord in my house. No, I want to stay in the church. There is no doubt in my mind that this little tree has got some roots or something. I'm going to have to go over there and look one of these days. But I'm sure that on the other side of that rock, there are some roots that are coming off of that little tree that somehow are grabbing onto the earth to get its nutrients. Well, our nutrients are from, coming from above, saints. Don't be in despair because things are stirring up. Heaven and earth are going to pass away. But if you're anchored to the word of God, it's going to stand. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me. That word abideth me forever. And I was praying this afternoon before service. I began to thank the Lord. We are the people that are worshiping forever. Remember that song we sing, I'm going to worship you forever. We don't have to wait till we get there. I, I can start worshiping now with God in my heart, Lord. What I'm doing right now is what I'm going to do forever. I'm telling you one thing. If you don't worship here, you're not going to worship over there. This is where we start our worship. This is where we fight our battle, saints of God. But we got to stay attached. Brother Angelo read, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why don't I walk in the counsel of the ungodly? Because they're going that way. They're going to show you, Brother Angelo's got, and I hope that man's not listening, but Brother, Brother, uh, Brother Angelo's got a friend, um, but I didn't mention his name, <laughs> but that, that is counseling, Brother Angelo. you got to hear, you got to listen to this motivational speaker. And they, they'll get you know, all excited, and they'll Make you want to make more money and, and blah blah blah. And we'll show you how to invest. Good counseling. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's bad counseling. The man is, is, is definitely got good counsel. And if you want to make money, that's what you got to do. But brother Angelo, eh, you know, he said, you know, you got to listen to this guy. He's a good motivational speaker. Brother, <laughs> brother Angelo kind of tricked the man. He said, really? He says, have you heard of Jeff Arnold? He said, I want to send you a video. And he sent him a video of Jeff Arnold. Could you imagine listening to a motivational speaker? He's going to show you how to make money. And then he's turn on Jeff Arnold. <laughs> he's going to teach you how to leave this world behind and grab a hold of Jesus. And it doesn't matter how much money, what color your skin is. If you're anchored to the rock of ages, blessed is a man. That's walk of God in the counsel of the ungodly. Somebody broke it down. I've, been, I've heard this scripture broken down two different ways. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Walk like a young man. You know, you walk. You're starting out your life, little angel. You're walking. His strides are getting a lot larger than grandpa's here, but he's walking. He's a young man. And then pretty soon you're going to get like Brother Rios. He says, sit down. Nor sitteth. In the seat of the scornful. Kids at school are going to be making fun of Christianity, using the Lord's name in vain, but you're not going to sit there when you get older. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful when you get like older. Nor standeth. So he starts talking about walking and then standing and then sitting. As a young man, a middle aged man that stands and then the old man that sitteth. All through his life, he's not going to listen counsel of the ungodly. I know that it might sound kind of crazy.
crazy right now, Brother Little Angelo, but but if you listen to the word of God, this world has no idea that this is even there. They, they walk and they run and they try to make more money. They jump and then they box and, and race cars and make condominiums and all kinds of ways to make money. And they stay up at night trying to figure out what am I going to do with this million? I'm going to invest in this. I'm going to double my money. And they're constantly thinking that money somehow is eventually going to bring happiness. The Bible calls that the deceitfulness riches, but you happen to be in a church here today, Brother Little Angelo and Brother Raymar, Brother Freddie, us men, Brother Angelo, we're in the church that God is going to teach us how to be great men of God, and we're not following if God blesses us with a lot of money we're going to bless him we're going to bless him, we're going to serve him no matter what, if we have to live under a bridge, if everything falls apart, we don't know what's going to happen with the economy, certainly if it keeps going the way it is we're going to have to fill up the trunk full of cash just to go buy some bread. We don't know, but that's okay. If I got enough money to put in the trunk of my car and go buy a loaf of bread, so be it. I'm not anchored to this monetary system. I'll, I'll operate in the, in the monetary, but I'm not going to put my heart into it. My heart is with Jesus. Because said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a, like a rock. He shall be like a tree. When Peter said, thou art the Christ. <laughs> and I've heard this preached many different ways also. Jesus said unto him, and I said unto thee, thou art Peter. When you look that up, stone. And I thought, you know, I've heard preachers say, you know, he's a lively stone and, and all this and that and the other. But no, he said, thou art Peter. Thou art a stone. Well, did you forget his name? No, he just mentioned his name. I'm a Jonah. It's not like Jesus didn't know his real name, but he called him a stone. And he said, upon this revelation, Peter, that you know who I am. I'm the anointed one. And, and then you know that I know you, that you are just a stone. That knowledge right there, that revelation that is going on between you and I, Peter. Upon that revelation, upon that rock, I'm going to build my church. So if you go to a church where they're always trying to build you up and always trying to make you think that you're something great, you better go back to the scripture. I don't want to be something great. I want the great one to live inside of me. I don't care if you're a pretty rock, a big rock. There's some pretty big rocks in Pentecost, right? I mean, they carry a lot of weight, and I appreciate those rocks. And you can paint it red, and I borrowed this from my school, so I'm going to take it back tomorrow. Don't nobody think that I stole this. Somebody from Highlands watching, oh, Mr. Real stole the rock. But I just thought, you know, as I began to, to think, I'm the anointed one, and you're just a stone. And I thought, wow, a stone, you can paint it up real pretty. But it's just a stone. It's just a rock. Then there are some middle-sized rocks. They can paint it up, too. But it's just a rock. Notice how that one there is not doing anything. And that one there is not doing anything. Well, maybe if we get a little tiny rock, we can get it to do something. Have you ever met those Christians that they're over, uh, over saved? They're so humble that they're proud of it. There's a little bitty rock, a little bitty stone. Come on, dude. Do something. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Like these, I hope this is a visual. That without him, not only we cannot do anything, but a real Christian should say, Lord, without you, I don't want to do anything. I don't want anything to be done out of my own stubborn will. I want everything that happens with this rock, with this vessel to be in the word of God. I want to be like Sister Garcia read. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. A hope of glory. Now, we're not going to always just be a rock. I begin to think of an old song. I don't know if I'm preaching too long for that, do me a signal or something. 
Robbie, I'm just an old chunk of clay, a chunk of coal. Song says, I think it's Johnny Cash. I'm just an old chunk of coal. I'm going to be a diamond someday. Well, I don't know. If you don't find Jesus, you ain't going to be nothing. And I'm not singing tonight that I'm just a chunk of coal, but I'm going to be a diamond. So I still got my eyes on the bride, right? I'm telling you, if I get to the revelation of, Lord, you're everything and I'm nothing. That's hard to swallow, Pastor. I want to be something. Hold on. Just hold on. Right now, if you can accept the fact that he's everything and that you're nothing, if you just hold on to that rock, one of these days there's going to be a trumpet sound. And the dead in Christ, we're no longer going to be inanimate. We're not going to be just a rock. We're going to have our new body. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to be like a tree that is planted by the water. Let's stand before I preach all night. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, oh God, for the revelation. So many people, they call themselves Christians, but they're going their own way, doing their own thing. They're not like a tree that is planted by the, the rivers of water, that the fruit that fadeth not, the leaf falleth not away. Their leaf falls off as soon as they leave the church on Sunday night. They go right back to what they were before. We don't want to be that kind of Christian. We want to be like a Christian, Lord, that is right by the water. And I, when I walk out of here, I've still got the fruit on me. If I go to the restaurant, I've still got the fruit upon me. I've got the leaf upon me. I've got the revelation upon me. I've got the blessings of the Lord upon me. Help us, Lord, to get that revelation. And if we can hold on, to allowing you to be God and we're not. To allowing your word to be true, not my opinion. And someday, Lord, we're going to hear a trumpet sound. And it's not long from now. You're coming to take your people home. And we shall have a new body with glorious body like unto yours, Lord. This is my hope. My hope is not in this world. We love you, O oh God. Let the world go its way. Let me be. For me to live as Christ and to die as with me. Bless us all as we go to our separate homes and keep us, oh God, with our hope in Jesus. In your name we pray. And everybody said amen.